Welcome to the Flash Performance Garage where I picked up a new tool that's gonna solve all my problems. Every one of them. Okay, maybe not every one of them. So this is a new tool from Autel. This is called an IM608. And the IM stands for Immobilizer. And the reason that I need an immobilizer tool to be able to program keys is because I have a 2015 Chevy Volt that I have been rebuilding over the past uh, six months or so. If you've ever thought about rebuilding a Chevy Volt, it is not for the faint of heart. And the only reason that I took on this project for my personal ride is because I bought two cars at one time. I went to a local salvage yard looking for something else and I saw a Chevy Volt and I was like, oh, I can use the battery out of that for a solar project or this or that. And then I looked on the other side of the Chevy Volt and I saw two Chevy Volts, two identical Chevy Volts, both 2015, both wrecked and both in similar color and exactly the same interior. In fact, this one, the one that I rebuilt was wrecked in the front where the other one over yonder was wrecked in the back. The one that was wrecked in the back didn't blow any airbags and the one that I'm rebuilding blew, well, every airbag. So I've gone through the process of taking the parts out of one wrecked car and putting them in the other one to get all the interior done, all the airbags done. I replaced the steering wheel. I replaced the, the front end, the grill, the bumper, the core support, I, all kinds of, of work has been done to this car. And I got it all put back together, but now I'm at the point where I need to like, turn stuff on. And I can't turn stuff on because I don't have any keys programmed for the car. Well, that's where this tool comes into play. I went to a local locksmith supplier and got a pair of keys for the car. These are OE keys that I was able to purchase through my locksmith supplier. I went to the dealer and got the key cut codes. And then I had a friend of mine that has a key cut machine cut the keys for me. Now these aren't just normal keys. These are flip keys, but these are also have a different style of cut to them. So you have to have a special key cut machine to be able to cut these. Now the dealer could have done it for me, but by buying the keys from a locksmith supplier and having them cut, I saved a bunch of money on the pair. The problem is that they don't, they don't do anything when you push the buttons. Nothing happens. The car doesn't, uh, the car doesn't recognize them yet. And we have to program these to the car. And that brings me to the tool. This is the IM608 from Autel. And this is special because it has key programming functionality built into it. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, I have an Autel and I can program keys to my cars. Well, you ding dong, you can program low security keys to your car. But what about the high security keys? What about proximity keys? What about these newer cars, newer than 2009 that have these high security systems? You can't do those with a normal Autel tool. So that's where the IM tool steps in. Now, this has the same diagnostic capability as what an MS908 and MS908S has, but it also has all the key programming features for the tool. So we're gonna go through this and show you how to use it. It also comes with a J2534 box. Now, the reason that this is gonna solve one of my problems is all the airbags blew in this car and I have to reprogram the airbag module because you can't reset it in this particular model. I had to go to the dealer and buy a brand new airbag module and then I have to program it to the vehicle. So now I can program my keys, I can do all my diagnostics and my code reading, and I have a JBox to be able to program via the OE website. It's a perfect tool! So make sure you check it out. I am 608 from Autel. I'm gonna show you how this works. First step is to program keys. Yeah, about that. The process of programming keys to this car takes a little bit of time. One of the first things that I did, if you haven't noticed yet, is I put a battery maintainer on the car. Now this is not your normal battery maintainer. This one's actually from Schumacher. And this battery charger has a service mode and that service mode applies 13 and a half volts to the car. Now it's not gonna be high amperage. I can't use it to program a BMW, but 
the key programming process for this car takes about 20 minutes and that is the flashers going and the lights on, the interior open. So I have to have something on the battery to be able to maintain it. And having a battery charger like this one from Schumacher gives me the ability to do this process without having to worry about the battery going dead. Now the reason I used this one and not my stable power supply that I would normally use from Schumacher is because I can't get to the freaking trunk because the keys don't work. So I had to use this guy on the little terminal underneath the hood to be able to do the keys. Once I get the keys done and I have to do the programming, then I'll switch over to the stable power supply to be able to do the programming side. First step of the process, I gotta get in the car. The doors are locked and the fobs don't work, but I do have the key for the door. When you do that, you ready for it. I gotta wait for that to stop doing it. If you notice on the inside of this car, there's no place to actually put a key in. So how do you turn on the ignition? Well, the Autel tool has thought of that. So we're gonna plug in the J-Box into the car and then we're gonna use the scan tool to be able to turn on the ignition and go through the process of programming keys. One of the things I love about this tool is it really walks you through the process. It kind of gives you the step-by-step -step guide. Uh, I'm not a locksmith by any means. And some of the cars are way above my pay grade, but the domestic cars and the Asian cars actually turn out to be pretty easy when using the Autel tool. So let's get the J-Box plugged in and get this process started. All right, first step is to go into a mobilizer on the screen. We're gonna accept. And you can't auto-vin the car because it's not, it's not turned on. So we're gonna go under GM. This one is a 2015 Chevy Volt. We'll go ahead and do manual selection. It is a Chevrolet USA Volt. Now, this is a 2015, so we're gonna do a 2015 smart key. First step in the process is to always read the immobilizer password. We need to be able to get the password out of the car, and this is where other tools fall short in the market and where the Autel tool can do that. So read the immobilizer password, password reading. It tells us to please switch on the ignition. I, I can't do that. So we're gonna let the tool do it. We're gonna say, okay. You'll see that the dash starts lighting up. You see the power button flashing there. And there's my pin code, 1392. That's the pin code that I need to remember. I would recommend writing that down. Or you could take a screenshot of it by pushing the camera button at the bottom and it'll save it. Now, a lot of times the Autel tool will save that pin code so you don't have to remember it. But I do that just in case. If I do lose it or if the tool loses it, I got it. We're gonna push OK. So password reading is done. We're gonna push escape. And now we're gonna go into the keyless system in the CAN network. And I wanna do all keys lost because I don't have any keys programmed for this car. All of them are gone. So we're gonna do all keys lost. Now if I went into information, it would tell me information about the module and the current status of the module as far as the calibration ID goes. Number of keys, of course. Add a key if I was just adding one key. So if it was a customer's car and they wanted one more key added, we could do that. I'm gonna do all smart keys lost. It's telling me to switch the hazards on. Now when we look at the tool, it says place the smart key to be learned into the key slot and take the other keys out of the vehicle. The key slot is usually in the armrest, under the bottle, rack, beside the ashtray, or in the glove box. I have taken the dash out of this car, and when I was taking the dash out of a car, I noticed that there was this, uh, this piece is above the dash, right, top center, and I noticed that on the bottom, there was this little module ring. Like, well, what the heck is that thing? Well, now I understand. That is the place That is the place we take that rubber mat out, and that is the key slot. So we will take the key, and we will stick it right there in that slot to be able to learn it. Now I have the key in the slot. We're gonna push OK. Oh look, there's my pin code that we pulled from before, so I didn't have to remember it. Thank you very much, Altel. We'll push OK. And it's going to say it will input the pin. You wanna do that? Yes. 
So the car is going to go through some configurations. It's actually going to take a 12 minute process to go through that configuration and to be able to erase all the keys. Now you ask why is there a 12 minute configuration process in there? So you don't steal cars, dummy. That's why it's in there. So that's actually from GM. GM has a 12 minute uh, configuration process. It has to go through that timer and then we'll be able to learn the keys. So we're going to speed this up for you just a little bit. Now it's time to just start following the directions on the tool. So we're going to press the start stop button. Push OK. The current key is complete, the matching, do you want to do another key? Uh, yep, I sure do. We're gonna take that key out. We're gonna take that one and put it over here where it's out of the way. We're gonna take the new key, stick it in, and click yes. Ote. Now, we've already done the 12 minute process, so we don't have to wait for that. We're gonna push the stop start button. Push okay. The current key is complete. Do you want to do another one? No, I only have two. Switch the ignition off. Press and hold. Press and hold the start stop button for 12 seconds. Here's the timer. Release. Okay. Start stop button again until the instrument panel illuminates. Instrument panel turned on. Ignition off. Step on the brake, press the start stop button to start the engine. Now the engine didn't start and I'll explain that here in a second why. Ignition off. Turn off the engine, open and close the driver's door, remove the smart key. Remove the smart key, press the lock and unlock button. Okay, key fobs work. Is there another key to be synchronized? Yes, let me grab that one. Lock and unlock at the same time. That one works. Number of matched keys, two, Ote. Matching complete. And we just programmed a set of keys for the car. Whoop, whoop. Pretty simple process. So why wouldn't it start? Well, we just had this discussion that this car was in a crash, right? And this is a Chevy Volt. This is a fully electric car with a gas generator to power the batteries. 
whenever a vehicle crashes like this, they have to protect the first responders. So in this particular car, I'll show you how they do that. So let's go ahead and go out of here. We're gonna go back to the main diagnostic screen. And we're gonna click on diagnostics. We're gonna go under auto VIN now, so we can auto detect. Since the dash is on, it will accept it and tell us everything we need to know about the car. This is 2015, here's the VIN. 2015 passenger car, Chevy Volt, there's my VIN. Yes, that's correct. Click OK. It's gonna start reading all the modules. We're going to diagnose and do an auto scan. Let's see what all these modules have to say. All right, we're gonna to go to report and get a health picture of this car and see what is going on. Immobilizer key not program, that's a history code, of course. Lost communication with the body control module. Lost communication with the body control module, inflatable restraint sensing. All this is going to be because the battery was dead. So we're lost a lot of communications with the uh, different modules, driver seatbelt retractor, lost communication, hybrid powertrain, immobilizers, blah, 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 air conditioner, so on, so forth. But here's what I want to show you. We can, uh, we can quick erase those codes. Go ahead and get rid of those. All that stuff should be fixed now that the keys are programmed, now that all the modules are back to where they're supposed to be, now that I have a battery charger on it, all that information should be null and void. I don't need that anymore. But you'll notice as we go through here that it's still giving us errors saying that it's not communicating with some modules. Oxygen transmission, auxiliary transmission pump, battery charger control module. And if I would go to try and plug this car in and charge up the battery, it would give me an error code. Here's why. So let's go into inflatable restraint sensing and diagnostic module. Notice that there's no codes in there. Notice the VIN number does not match my car. My VIN number is 6631. This one is a 6753, and that is because I took the airbag module out of the other car to try and put in this car to be able to save $300 and not have to buy a new module. Not gonna work on this particular car. So let's go back up here. Now, this car wouldn't start during that key immobilizer process, and I wanna show you why. The car was in a wreck, and when a car is in a wreck, we have to think about protecting the first responders that come upon that wreck. This is a high voltage vehicle, and we don't want them to get shocked and killed in the process. So what this car does is it will disable all the electrical system whenever the airbags deploy. So if we go in here into the hybrid powertrain control module two, We'll select that module. We'll go into live data, data display, and then into the contactors. And we can see that all the contactors are open. Even after I've tried to reset them, I've tried to reset the airbag module, it's still open because the airbag module for this car is not correct and it has to be relearned. So we're gonna have to go through that process of relearning that airbag module and we're going to have to do that with the JBox and with a laptop. So, that will be part two of this video. So thanks for watching. Make sure you check out part two of how to use a J-Box off of my IM608 to program this Chevy Volt airbag module. I'm Chad from Flash Performance. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe to the page. We'll see you next time.